are live on Twitch. Yes. Um, I'm really excited because we have come such a long way when it comes to building this chat bot live. We've done Lex, we've done Lamba, we've done a lot of great things. I'm so glad you guys have been there with me to get this stuff done, right? Really excited that you've been with me in this whole journey. And we're going to continue our journey today with a big climax. We have Working Code. It's out there on GitHub. We're going to review that. But I also have a special guest with me today. So I'll introduce him a little later. As well as, don't forget, Nikki is on Shaddy. She's there for you guys. She's uh, moderating and things of that nature. So, hi guys. Um, thank you so much for joining. All right. With that, let's get this show on the road. The first thing we're going to do, um, thanks to one of my great co-workers who has joined, he said, oh, I really want to make sure I understand all the pieces and everything that's going on. So what we're going to do first, before we do anything else, I am going to try to make sure we all are on the same page of where we are. All right, so do to do that, let me switch over my screen here. All right, screen is now being switched. <clears throat> And what I want to do is just show you guys what we've done thus far. So you should see my screen and this is our .NET architecture. And so what we've done thus far is we have built the, the Lex bot, right? And you can see the link to, if you missed that one, that's what we started off for. It was the episode, well, kind of episode one. Episode one was architecture, but this architecture we explained in episode one. So episode two, we got into the heart of things where we actually built the bot. So you should see an episode and you should see the link. We built the bot. So if you missed that, we're there. Um, also, after we built the bot, we have to do use something great called Lambda. I love serverless. I love Lambda. And so we built the Lambda functions for the, the Lex bot. But you know, in building stuff, you always have to debug. So our next session, we actually debugged the Lambda function live. And you guys helped. It was totally phenomenal. You rock for doing that. And then we added Cognito because we needed to build our application. So obviously I don't have the application links on there, but you can always go to aws.amazon.com backslash Twitch and see the full series. So you can see where we actually built the MVC application, built our Lex service, added our Lambda function in there, used dependency injection. But just to think about the architecture because of what we're doing here, this is what we've done thus far. So in doing all of that thus far, now we are ready to deploy today. We're actually going to deploy this thing on an Amazon EC2 instance with the, with the uh, web app server. So this is where we are getting ready to get things going um, today, right? So before we get things going, we obviously need to see the code running. The code is out there, like I said, live on GitHub, so you guys can run it yourself, but let's see this puppy run live, right? Because we did all that work yesterday, hopefully you guys joined us, and now we're ready for to see it in action. So I'll just switch over again. This is our code. Um, if you remember correctly, oh, let me tell you one thing. So we did the code yesterday, it compiled on the second, first or second try, which is unheard of. But of course, you know how debugging goes. There has to be at least something wrong. So I found one thing wrong. Let me just point this out to you. And it was something super simple, which quite frankly, guys, I'm proud of myself. I really am surprised I didn't um, make more errors uh, than this. You know how this goes with code. So if I go to our startup CS that you see on the page, I'll blow this up just a little bit for you guys, just in case it's still a little low. Um, we had all this code, it's out there, you'll see, but what I had missing, and I'm just showing you this so just in case you forget too. If you remember correctly, we were using Session to be able to take, you know, web is stateless, to so take that stateless web and save our interactions between the chatbot and Lex. So Lex is stateless. So if you look on the screen here, I forgot one key thing that should have been here. This right here, use Session. Simple line, one line, but it was error because I'm trying to save our state for our session object in our session object without enabling us to use session. Duh. Okay, I fixed that. That code is out there. It's working. 
So, because I know you guys will not fully believe me that this code is functional, I am actually going to run it. So you guys can see this running. I did I did do a little something that off camera for you guys. I actually changed the UI so that it would look pretty because you know, I told you I am UI challenged. So it didn't look pretty. It wasn't pretty, let's be clear. It worked, but it was not aesthetically pleasing. And I know you guys out there are developers, you get it. That's the hard part for those of us who think code a lot. But to do this in the right way, I wanted to make sure that we had a pretty application. So you can see here on um, Visual Studio, I'm running. So with it running, let's get, hopefully, let's uh, go to the browser. I'll go ahead and transition. Uh, you'll see that it's uh, starting to come up now in the browser. Super slow. I probably have too much stuff open. It is it is feasible. It is plausible um, that I need to close some stuff down. But we're going to hopefully cross our fingers that that'll come up soon. Let me close some of, let me close my PowerPoint down to make sure that I am not causing issues here. Hi, Tech Geek 42 Thank you for, for joining us. I really appreciate it. This is super slow, but that's okay. It's going to run. Um, so with that, we're gonna get, ah, it's finally coming up. Yeah, super slow, sorry guys. Now, it is up. This is our chat bot. Trust me, if you guys knew my challenges with UI, you should be super proud of me that it looks like this. I mean, super proud. It's, I suck at UI, but I'm working on it. It's a challenge that I try to overcome. So now that you see this up, um, it is, it is functional. Um, it looks somewhat usable. I'm kind of, again, proud of myself. So let's just, you know, see it in order. So order flowers. Spelling is fundamental. We have our clear box there. Uh, and so if you look over, I'm just going to go back to the code really quickly so that you guys can see this. But if you see this running, obviously I'm running in debug mode, which makes it a little bit slower. But what I want you to see with this is, actually you can track the processes of the dependencies, where it's posting. You can see that there, I'm, you know, obviously I'm submitting a post there. Um, it's tracing the executable of the view result that I send back. So the session is actually started, it saved the key. So all of these things you can actually see as you're debugging. Another thing I'll point out, we talked about this in earlier episodes, but just to make sure we are still on the same page, is that all of this stuff I can do within Visual Studio, but what you also can see within Visual, Visual Studio is the great ASP, um, sorry, not ASP, the great AWS Explorer is out there. So if I wanna check on like my Lambda and, and things of that nature, I can also see that. So, you know, don't forget that if you're using Visual Studio on Windows, you have some options there to do a couple of things. Um, back to the browser, <clears throat> it came back. So you remember our order flowers. This is running all on the web. It's running on my local host. This is the code we did. This is not um, any messed up code or any code I, I use. Everything that you see is what we built live with you on Twitch. So this is actually functional. So what type of flowers? Um, roses, cause I, you know, I'm so creative with thinking of stuff. So what day you want to pick up, what day do you want to pick it up? As you know, we talked about with the bot, I can say something like Tuesday and it will know what Tuesday actually means. Um, and so what time? So as you see, we have a functional bot that is actually here working. Code is out there on GitHub. I've shared the link on Twitter. Um, Nikki can share the link as well in the chat moderation. All right. So we are... Um, ready to go with deployment, which is hopefully what you guys are here to see. I'm really excited. So let me introduce um, my coworker who is uh, patiently waiting for us on video to show you. I'm going to introduce him and then, you know, he's patiently waiting to talk to you guys about we have this running. It's running localhost. Obviously, that's cool for us if we're just testing. But we want the chat bot to actually work so you guys can hit an endpoint. So if you wanted to deploy this to multiple things, and we're going to start off with, since we're using 
.NET here. We're going to start off first with a deployment in Windows. And then the other deployment we could do in Linux later. We'll, we can do that other one. So with no further ado, let me introduce Zoltan. Hi, Zoltan. How are you? Hi, hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, okay, yeah, Zoltan is it. here. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Zatan is here to, uh, he is going, oh, wait, before I go into what he's here for, I should probably let him um, introduce himself. That would be good to, you know, say who he is and why he's here. So Zatan, uh, you do your own introduction. I won't do you justice. <laughs> so uh, our name is Zlatan. Um, I've, uh, this is literally like a fourth continent and I don't even know which country I live in anymore. Um, but, um, I've, uh, I've been a uh, developer pretty much since uh, the beginning. Uh, and, uh, I've been working with Microsoft, um, you know, in the past quite a bit. I was Microsoft most valuable professional, uh, work with, uh, the, um, bunch of research and stuff and, uh, did many, uh, great and wonderful things with some of the Ranger teams as well. And, and now, uh, you know, I'm doing all of that, um, on AWS and I've been doing it for, um, now more than three years, uh, which has been an amazing journey so far. Uh, so I'm here to, um, uh, to, to show you how to deploy all of this good stuff. I, I was, I was the one uh, working originally on the, uh, uh, .NET chatbot with, uh, with Terra and, um, uh, uh, among other things, I was responsible for uh, the CDCI and uh, uh, deployment, um, you know, and uh, infrastructure as a code um, on our side. So that's what I'm going to be showing you. All right. So uh, you must have some time here. Take the way. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and stage. Excellent. So I just want to make sure you guys, uh, you guys can actually see what I can see, uh, which is my, uh, uh, which is uh, my sublime over here with the uh, chatbot um, dot yaml. Um, I'm guessing yes, right? Yes, I will take that as a yes. Um, so a couple of things about uh, uh, CloudFormation itself. Uh, CloudFormation is basically our um, infra infrastructure as a code. Um, it can either be done in JSON or in YAML. Um, and uh, I, I do have YAML now. It's kind of more compact and easier to use. Um, you know, the, uh, the whole syntax is very similar to Python in a way um, as well. Um, so um, the, the Oh, oh, okay. So we need more, more blowing up. Sure. Let me, uh, let me do more blowing up here. You guys tell me when it uh, starts looking good. How about that? Okay. Can you guys hear me? Um, hello. So can you guys see see what I'm uh, seeing? I'm I'm hoping yes. Ah, good stuff. Are we getting on a on a separate one? Okay. Um, good stuff. So anyway, um, I'm I'm gonna assume everything is good, and and uh, you guys can see what I'm showing you. <laughs> so. Uh, 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 quite simply, uh, you know, the, the cloud formation is really, you know, infrastructure wise has really helped me uh, personally uh, in, in the past uh, quite a bit. Um, uh, basically, um, you know, anything that required really long deployments of any level of infrastructure and all that, you know, um, and cut, you know, was cut down from, you know, sometimes months at a time down to like hours. Uh, you know, days or anything like that, um, you know, allowing us to build entire infrastructures, um, you know, um, straight uh, straight out of uh, cloud formations and rebuild them at, at will, um, you know, at, at just the click of a button and all that sort of stuff. So um, here uh, I'm, I'm showing you uh, the uh, basically kind of the structure of it as it is, and we're going to go and go kind of bit by bit. Um, so. Um, out of all the uh, um, out of all the elements of cloud formation that you see, um, the most important one really is um, is the resources one, and that's the only one that 
is not optional, uh, whereas uh, everything else is optional. However, for what we're doing right now, it absolutely isn't optional because we will make you great use of um, uh, things like conditions, mappings, uh, metadata, um, uh, parameters especially, uh, and even outputs. Um, so if you look at first thing and first element is really uh, the AWS template uh, format version, and this is a standard one, it hasn't really changed since uh, 2010, as you can see. Um, and then, um, then we have our conditions. So we're going to go a little bit backwards and we're going to uh, kind of go with the uh, less important things and we're going to end up with the most important aspect, um, you know, in the end. Um, and also what we're going to do, what I'm showing you right now is really a CloudFormation um, that, um, uh, that was for the original ch uh, .NET chatbot, which was the uh, one built on um, .NET Core 1.0. Uh, and um, and uh, it was it was you know fundamentally different code at a time uh, when we did it. Um, so we're going to try and adjust it to uh, the, the, this new project and new thing that um, uh, that Tara and uh, Nikki have been working on and showing you so far. Um, so um, you know um, so hopefully everything will go well uh, and you'll see it uh, in a beginning to an end. So let's go through this. Um, so next next uh, uh, next element would be the conditions. And conditions are really there to make sure that you don't, um, when you're specifying parameters, because uh, parameters can be specified uh, obviously programmatically and via CLI uh, and all that, um, but also uh, they can be specified, um, you know, uh, manually. And uh, and as uh, you know, specifying it manually is concerned. Let me just see on the chat. I got you guys. Uh, and uh, oh. You guys want me to end my video? Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, I really don't want you to look at my face too much anyway. Not much to look at. Hey, wait, where is this thing? Um, so let me quickly end my video. I can continue this. Uh, here we go. So now just my screen, right? Awesome. Um, so, um, so here basically you know, this prevents us from uh, 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 from uh, from making mistakes when we put in anything manually, and even if it, if we actually specify something programmatically, if it was a mistake, um, so it allows us to create uh, conditions around putting in parameters um, uh, that we want to pass to this um, infrastructure as a code. And we have some um, you know examples like a uh, you know whether we want to create build resources, where we want to create a uh, a website S3 buckets, and whether we want to create uh, whether we want to use subnets or create new subnets uh, or, or something like that. And um, and here we have a description, um, and which uh, just yeah, this is an ASP.NET Core chatbot application, right? So now so far uh, we have all of that. Now comes in again. We're going a little bit backwards here. Uh, uh, it's uh, the mappings, and uh, mappings are pretty important, guys. Um, this is uh, this is something that allows us to uh, uh, allows our CloudFormation template in this case uh, to uh, work in different um, um, regions, um, but not just work in different regions. It's not just specifically for regions. It's really just for any type of mapping that you may have. So you might have different values and different parameters for different environments. Your environment, you might have you know, dev, test, QA, and production environment. And for deployment of these environments via uh, CloudFormation, you might actually have mapped different values, right? Um, in this case, a really good example is really mapping the um, different values uh, for, um, for different regions because um, you know, we are using uh, uh, different, different Emmys in this case to actually create um, a, um, a, a, a virtual instance to which we're going to deploy chatbot and where it's going to be working. Um, and we have uh, here uh, both Ubuntu and Windows. Um, and these, uh, you can use our own images. These are basically our own images, but you could actually build your own uh, AMI that is specific to what you're doing, and you can then reference that um, image. So um, each AMI has a unique identifier, as you can see here. Uh, and, um, um, and, and, and those are different for different regions. So the same, exactly the same uh, um, uh, AMI won't have the same ID uh, in two different regions. So, um, so that's very important and that's why we do have this mapping. So we're going to move on from there and we're going to get to the metadata. Now the metadata is really, is really there to make things very pretty for us. Um, 
and create parameter groups. So you'll see one, one of the things when we're working in a console, which I will show you shortly when we actually go over to the console, um, is that um, in console, um, you know, these parameters, when we, parameters that I'm going to show you now as well, um, they just come up kind of, you know, in, in a kind of structured side-by-side uh, -side order. Um, what metadata allows us to do is allows us to create, uh, um, you know, a, a little bit more of a friendly form and also allows us to create labels for applications because most of the parameters, and we're going to switch on to the parameters right now, um, as you can see, they're all like, uh, you know, one-liners. They all have to be part of the, you know, it has to be a single word and, and all this sort of stuff. You can't have any spaces or any characters. But if you introduce labels and stuff and you can map those labels to parameters, um, then you can have more friendlier names uh, around, uh, you know, what you want to um, be put in for those parameters. And that really only matters in a case when you're manually putting in parameters like what we will um, and what I will show you. Um, next bit is the um, the outputs. Uh, so the outputs is really once the once the resource uh, specific resources are created, um, we uh, um, um, we can actually get some of the outputs. In this particular case, because we're going to create uh, an actual instance, uh, we want uh, to know what the um, you know DNS and HTTP value is going to be once we deploy the application, so that we can just click on it. And um, and and you know and, and test it and see whether our chatbot is working. Um, so we're going to put this uh, guy over here. Oops, no, 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 didn't copy the right thing. Let me copy the right thing here. Uh, output. Come here. Come here. Come here. Okay, got it. Um, and then um, and here's the here's the fun part. Here's the parameters. And as you can see here. Um, you know, the, the, the structure of parameters is very straightforward, much like with outputs and the rest of the stuff. It's always um, what type of, uh, you know, what type of data we're putting in. Um, it's a string. Um, what, what is the description of it? Um, and um, what, what is the, in this case, we have description operating system. Um, uh, default here is Ubuntu. We have optional Ubuntu and Windows. Uh, and, and based on what option we choose, we do have conditions uh, that then select, uh, you know, based on mappings. Uh, as you can see here, that select the right AMI for us to use, and based on obviously which region we happen to be deploying this um, a cloud formation in. Uh, right now, this one actually does facilitate things for US West 2, East 1, and West 1. Um, and then we have a couple of things. So we have the GitHub owner, uh, we have GitHub OAuth token, which we're going to create for you guys. Um, and, uh, you know, and then don't bother screenshotting it. I'm just going to destroy it after the session. But, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but in any case, um, uh, you know, uh, that's it. And then also the GitHub repo that we're going to be using. Um, and then, um, then there are parameters that are used um, for uh, CDCI pipeline services. So uh, the services we're going to be using is um, a code pipeline, which is our, um, our orchestration service, and that one does orchestration of uh, the following services. So it will, um, you know, um, use GitHub as a source, and then uh, it will promote it uh, to build to a code build a service um, that um, that requires or uh, rather um, uh, uses. Uh, build spec uh, to to define uh, all the actions and that's actually quite easy and very um, uh, quick to grasp um, uh, for a lot of people that are work with um, so I'm looking forward to showing you that um, and then um, then it will go over to um, uh, code deploy which uh, which with the help of app spec which is a similar file to build spec um, 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 you know will know uh, will deploy this to our to the instance that we've created as part of this um, you know entire infrastructure infrastructure here. Um, you can see that uh, that you can also tear, uh, you know, uh, select the type of the instance type that you want to use. We're kind of sticking to the T2 micro mostly because it's part of part of the free tier. So if you're testing it, you know, it doesn't really incur any of the um, any of the cost. Uh, key pair name, of course, you need that if you're going to access the actual instance itself. Um, then uh, project IDs, uh, and you can see here we can actually put constraint um, um, and um, Regex constraint, which which allows us to make sure that people don't make a mistake when they specify uh, specific names and all that. Um, so as you can see, we want to make sure that it's between two and fifteen characters. This is what our service requires, and then we're also going to select a subnet ID and VPC ID where we're going to be deploying this this good stuff. Um, so uh, let's see so far what we have. Uh, we don't ha really have anything on the parameters. Let's put in all the parameters in 
and that'll that'll do for the for the parameters. Then uh, um, we have everything that is <laughs> that is optional, and then we will move on to the necessary, as I said earlier. On. So uh, show, sure, got it. Yep, here we go. So let's move on to the necessary. Here's the necessary. Um, and that's the uh, that's that's the wait. Let's go past the parameters. Two resources, right? So uh, a couple of things, and you'll see. You know, uh, we'll go over this in no particular order. So there's things like uh, policies that we need to build in. As you can see, sometimes uh, CloudFormation is actually smart enough to figure out some of the dependencies around the infrastructure that you um, uh, explicitly defining. And um, however. Uh, you know, uh, some things, um, you know, you need to kind of explicitly put in as a condition. And um, and so uh, we are here putting in, we don't actually have a condition that we're explicitly putting in to make sure that code build resources are deployed before we start creating code build policy um, and everything that is required um, and, and code build itself. So, um, so as you can see, this is the policy that we create. Um, it, it is, I apologize, this is a little bit jumbled up over here. Uh, and uh, you know it has the logs create log group logs create log stream set put object um, so all these are all the necessary policies uh, and part of the policy document that we need um, we also in included here uh, uh, you know KMS uh, generate data key encrypt and decrypt um, uh, rights um, specifically for encryption this is for added security posture um, and um, so uh, now as we kind of go down um, you can check, um, you know, uh, obviously we give it a name and then the code build project um, and application and all that. Um, we, are, we are here, as you can see, we are referencing, um, um, you know, for the most part, um, you know, things uh, out of the properties that we specified, things like app name, um, S3 buckets and so on um, that we've already predefined. Um, here you can see we, um, you know, we're referencing a, um, uh, an image and uh, that we're going to be using and stuff and we're going to kind of be changing all this to uh, um, you know 2.0 uh, and uh, so we're gonna because um, uh, right now it's referencing one um, and you know what is it it's a, it's a container we're going to be using this is what code build is going to be using to actually build the entire package for us before it gets deployed we're not going to be deploying it to, con to container we're going to be deploying to an actual EC2 instance however code build uses containers um, to actually um, uh, to perform a build process, and it can also do the tests and everything uh, for you. Um, so there are there's, there's there are the roles. There's the code code deploy application that we talked about. Uh, this is the one that actually goes uh, a service. Um, uh, first of all, a service role uh, for um, uh, the, uh, the 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 code code deploy application to to deploy uh, um, uh, and allow assume role and um, deploy. Uh, um, you know, on behalf uh, for 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 code pipeline and all that um, uh, um, code uh, code package to the actual EC2 instance itself, and uh, and here all the numerous policies. I'm not going to go through all of them uh, right now. What are deployment group? You can actually specify different fleets of servers and stuff, and I employ you to kind of really uh, check out how the code deploy works. It's actually fairly simple, but it's very fairly powerful as well. Um, and uh, here's our, our project pipeline. Um, once again, uh, with all the necessary references um, uh, that we need for our, uh, you know, for, for our chatbot, um, and that here's our um, S3 artifact artifact bucket policy, um, um, where, uh, where, where you know the, the actual code is going to be stored in transition as it goes through the CDCI. Um, so um, um, this and, and last but not least, this is really the the the, the EC2 instance where we're going to deploy it. And one of the things that I wanted to show you here um, is uh, um, is what we're bootstrapping it with. So you can see uh, this is our user data, which is the bootstrapping data uh, uh, for Base64. And um, uh, we are first uh, um, uh, now. This is uh, we are getting authorized keys, um, and this is kind of part of the core encryption. This is not actually necessary for you guys to specifically use. I do have it uh, as part of this. What's really important is that. Um, we actually pull, pull the um, uh, CLI, latest version of the CLI. We make sure that um, um, uh, Python is installed uh, for AWS CLI as it's being used. And then Ruby, uh, which, um, um, uh, which is necessary for the code deploy agent. 
Um, and then uh, that we pull and make sure that the code deploy agent is uh, present um, you know, on our image. So as the image starts, it should really have a code deploy agent as code deploy works with an agent, right? To go ahead and deploy this package um, and get it up and running. Uh, and then as you can see, we install it uh, and all this sort of stuff. And, you know, we can um, install Bodo and Bodo3, the dev libraries. Um, uh, this is more for uh, for the crypto side of things. Um, however, that's not that's not necessarily important, but it is something um, that that you can use to improve once again your security posture. Um, this is our instance profile that goes with the instance itself. Uh, the web app role. Uh, this is the role that gets attached uh, to the EC2 instance. Um, as uh, some of you may or may not know, uh, this is the uh, role um, uh, that uh, any code that runs on the instance assumes. So any policies that you give specifically, which are these policies over here, is basically policies that you're giving, in, uh, allowing the code that is executed on this EC2 instance um, to um, um, uh, to execute, um, you know, to have rights to specific services, to specific resources, and things like that. And that's how you control it in a sense. So this is much, obviously, hell of a lot better than, uh, you know, you, you, you don't want to be, um, uh, you know, putting in, um, you know, access and secret keys and all kinds of specific, specific users and having that shared between, uh, in a, um, you know, multiple instances and craziness like that and having the potentially compromised and all that, you do want to have this, um, uh, you know, assume rule uh, through, um, um, through the rule policy that is assigned to the instance itself, right? Um, and this is a security group which uh, basically allows, uh, you know, I think here it allows port 80 uh, um, from anywhere and all this sort of stuff. So you can specify your ingress and egress rules uh, specifically for that. So uh, we're going to go, we are at the very end. Thank you for sticking with me uh, <laughs> through, through all this. There is a lot. I know there is a lot. So uh, go ahead and ask questions. I will be more than happy to actually chat to you uh, once I'm more... Uh, I'm sorry, actually, my, my, my hands are a little bit untied. So we're going to actually put this thing through. Um, a couple of things that we wanted to um, uh, change over here. I think it's the core 2.0. Uh, and uh, I really should be passing this. Um, I really should be passing this as an image over here, but I'm not. I'm actually hard coding it in, so don't don't do what I'm doing. Um, um, but you should be you should be kind of specifying that um, you know as part of the parameters, and you should be passing it down um, really, and that that'll actually make it a lot better. That way, you can also parameterize uh, things like image and type and all that. Uh, well, specific image, you know, in this case, and and anything else. So there's really no limit to what you can parameterize here, um, and how far you can go with it. Um, so, hopefully this actually works. Uh, we can actually call this um, chat bots so three and save it over here. Um, so a couple of things now, and there's there's quite a bit on our uh, on. Uh, um, oh, here we are. This is a uh, this is our delayed Twitch over here. Um, Quite a bit that we actually need to do. Uh, so here is here is Terra's uh, um, Twitch.net uh, chatbot um, in uh, uh, her GitHub repository. Um, so what I did is that I forked it, uh, and um, this is my old chatbot test that uh, that is working on 1.0. So um, if all else falls, we can run that one in parallel with the other one, so you can kind of see both of them and how they're working. Um, and then um, this is Terra's one that I forked over. And you can see that this one actually has um, uh, uh, the actual requirements, uh, uh, or rather it has aspects that uh, are necessary um, uh, for it to run. And more importantly, things like uh, app spec and build spec file that I mentioned early on. Um, and it, as you can see, here's the app spec and here's the build spec. Um, and if we open up, Let's start with the build spec, build spec um, itself. It actually tells you um, for each of the phases, pre-build, build, um, and what artifacts it's using, um, which files need to be, uh, you know, uh, put in, and where app spec needs to be um, as an instruction 
to the service when it actually receives a package. Um, so um, here, um, you know, we um, uh, we're storing yeah, uh, uh, .NET and publishing uh, and all that. So we want to make sure that we are referencing the right things. As you can see, I have .NET chat, Lex chatbot, um, and .NET Lex chatbot C, uh, CS proj. Um, over here, uh, that's not going to work with Terra's stuff because we don't have it here. Um, um, Terra doesn't even have the same um, the same folders as I have or anything like that. So uh, let's let's learn through this, uh, um, and hopefully everything will work out uh, pretty well. Uh, and then um, um, if you look at the app spec file, uh, similar type of thing. Like I said, it's very similar uh, to the build spec itself. Here we have we're saying. These are the source of the files. Uh, we want to kind of copy that on a destination, which is on Ubuntu is here. So we're going to use Ubuntu as an example in this case. Um, and um, uh, it says, please copy these files to this destination on the uh, once it gets deployed. And then uh, on these particular hooks uh, uh, on application stop, um, go ahead and um, run stop service. And this is a this is. A, uh, um, a script that I have running uh, um, uh, that is part of the scripts folder um, um, specifically in my project. Let's see if, uh, yeah, for, of course, of course, Terra doesn't have any of that. Thanks a lot, Terra. Uh, <laughs> and then there's also uh, before install, um, uh, after install, so you can see I'm referencing scripts. Obviously, you can actually put directly, um, um, uh, you know, the, the scripts that you want to be running. Um, and Yes, 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 I am. Yes, I am. Hopefully we have enough time though. Uh, but I'll, I'll run both, right? Just in case, uh, in any case, just to show you guys uh, also the end product and everything. Um, so, and, and here are the scripts uh, uh, for um, after install, install .NET Core, install HTTPD uh, and, uh, and all that. And uh, we have an application, go ahead and um, uh, run stack service. Now I could have actually specified all of these uh, things, um, you know, in, um, you know, as specific commands, but it's just easier to do it in script because you can update those scripts. So if you're wondering what those scripts look like, uh, well, here's the script. So, so you can see this is a, a bin bash. Um, um, <laughs> I'm just reading all the, uh, uh, all the comments on that. It's pretty cool. Can't wait to start commenting. Um, so as you can see, here's the install.net core. Um, aspects and um, and it's looking you know making sure that it's installing uh, you know the right thing um, and uh, uh, for Ubuntu specifically uh, and all this sort of stuff then um, uh, NuGet packages that are required um, if you look at the rest of the stuff that we have HTTPD um, uh, yeah we have uh, um, uh, this one is uh, yeah this is the in in install uh, of the actual uh, uh, web server itself. Um, and um, uh, for specifically for Apache, so we make sure that we have, uh, we pull down Apache, we install it, get it up and running. Um, and uh, let's look at this stuff. Um, and so, so we have the remove application uh, uh, as well, which uh, just removes the entire Laxport application. And, uh, oops, too much. Um, start service. Uh, which allows us to um, actually start the service itself and stop it. So these are all, you know, important really aspects of um, of running and scripts required for us to run um, chatbot um, specifically, um, you know, and when once we deploy it, right, when, you know, um, um, aspects of starting, stopping, deleting, or putting in new uh, and all of that sort of stuff. So um, all, all the janitor stuff that we need to do um, and that uh, that we need to perform and stuff, uh, like I said, it was neatly put into scripts and any updates can kind of come in. Obviously for the Windows stuff, um, you would have to change that to, you know, uh, whatever command line requirements are um, on that. Uh, and I hope you guys can see this. Uh, I think we should go there. So, um, and, um, you know, and, and specifically now, if we go back to, um, uh, to uh, Terra's, you can see that, um, you know, this this whole, a uh, whole bunch of uh, things that are missing. So we need to make sure that we uh, have the right references to um, to the project over here, uh, both the solution. Um, so um, I think it would be if we were to actually go ahead and create a new file. 
and we we can actually give this uh, new file a name so it will be a bit build spec oh we don't want this we don't want to create this leaf sorry uh, we want to create it over here rather create new file so build spec that yaml and then if you want to go ahead and uh open this guy up and then oops make sure we copy everything sound <laughs> little sounds and all that and something happening in the background i hope you guys don't hear it um so here we are uh you can see that we we have we don't have actually the um the same um uh the same references we want to make sure that we have the same ones uh so we're gonna go copy this uh to the right folder and then we're gonna go ahead and in the folder itself we're gonna reference uh the right solution and uh and then once again gonna make sure that we are building it and we are building the right uh, CS project. Sorry, CS project that we need. That's the guy. So let's make sure we have the right folder structure because it's not just merely this, it's Lex chatbot. There we go. And then we can also replace all of that over here. And then we wanna make sure that the build output um, is going to the right place. Um, so in this particular case, uh, I think we are putting it in .NET uh, chatbot folder, which you know, in our case, is really going to be uh, directly related to uh, uh, to basically being in this folder. Uh, so we can make sure we got that thing. All the all this, yeah. So this really tells us where we want our artifacts and our files to be when we actually performing the build. Um, um, then we have phases once again uh, defined and the commands that we want to execute as part of these uh, phases. And then we would kind of just structurally put in uh, each of the commands um, as it goes through. Um, so, um, so we can go ahead and uh, commit new file. It's probably gonna ask me. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it doesn't mind pretty happy with us. Um, and uh, on the other hand, we're gonna go and make sure we get the uh, app spec file. And the app spec file has, uh, has more going on with it and it has a lot more um, uh, a, a lot more aspects to it as well. Um, in a sense that, uh, let me just create a file again. And by the way, I'm not really expecting you to do it this, this way. I'm just doing it because, you know, we're doing it on Twitch and we're doing it live and the whole thing. Um, you, you, you should really, you know, pull down these things and, you know, perhaps just edit it in your, um, uh, in your IDE and, uh, and go ahead uh, and push it up right when you're ready with it. Um, so, um, yeah, let me just make sure I got, oh, I got the right name, appspec.yaml. That you have so going to the hooks and all that so these are the source files and destinations so you've got to first of all first of all copy the files that you're going to be using including everything that that, that you may need and you want to copy it to the right place because of, of where it needs to be executed obviously that's going to be dependent on the operating system or and the image um, things are getting executed um, and then um, and that's where we really you start running so because i've copied all the scripts and everything to it um, you know uh, 
you have uh, you know stop service. Da, da, da. Now I actually can run those. Um, I'm actually instructing the agent uh, for code deploy to go ahead and execute these scripts uh, um, on on the actual instance uh, to uh, stop service, to remove application, install .NET Core, install HTTPD, um, and start service. Um, so, um, in, in, and like I said. It's really great if you put it in proper, um, uh, in a script files, then you can actually update those scripts. Otherwise, your app spec and build spec file are gonna be very, very messy with lots of stuff in it. So you, you really don't want that. Um, so this is kind of a best practice. Another, uh, some of the other hooks besides application stop before install, after install application start, um, you have a lot more hooks as well if you're doing things like blue-green deployments. Um, so you'll have um, you know, the, the traffic draining um, hooks on when the traffic stops uh, and when you're switching over the traffic and all this sort of stuff. Um, so um, you can do pretty cool things there, um, you know, and you can run some code based on the, uh, you know, traffic draining or anything like that that, that may, you may need uh, specifically for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go um, commit um, uh, this file and all that. Um, really what I need to do um, um, is um, make sure that I uh, have um, all the, um, all the scripts over here. So um, I would say, you know, make sure to actually copy all of those. Uh, I'm not sure how much time we have. I know we, we're closing in on 12. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> um, but I do want to show you how everything actually runs uh, through. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, go to the cloud formation. And um, we can go ahead and create stacks. So let me just go ahead and make this bigger so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Um, we're going to go uh, choose a file. You can see this is a chatbot three, chatbot two, um, and we're going to use the, the the chatbot, the original one. We're going to start off with that one because I know that one we actually deployed the actual chatbot um, and everything with it. So end to end, uh, and we can obviously go ahead with the with the one we created as well, referencing uh, now the right um, uh, the, the right containers and everything that we need to use for our code deploy. Uh, and uh, Couple of things we have to do. So this is, uh, uh, so let me introduce you to, to, to CloudFormation and kind of how it looks like. So some of you have seen it, uh, maybe some of you haven't um, and all this sort of stuff, but uh, basically it takes out all the parameters that are specified, if you guys remember correctly, um, you know, previously, and then it creates fields for them uh, based on the field type and all this. So, so do, do, you know, they, they don't necessarily need, need to be string fields. They could be like uh, multi-choice fields or anything like that and then allows us to actually go ahead and um, um, uh, specify the parameters that are in. Um, best, this is best done also programmatically via CLI. You can actually create a full like uh, uh, JSON of parameters and then you can kind of swap uh, these parameters and uh, you know, using the actual command um, to, um, uh, to, to initiate uh, uh, cloud formation. Um, um, and, and trust me, a lot of us really use command line stuff, you know, um, you know this this uh, uh, you know, th th this console stuff is really uh, kind of more for show and for that these type of things. So uh, we're going to create this uh, Twitch chatbot, and then um, I'm going to give it uh, um, uh, name Twitch um, um, Twitch. I want to say chatbot as a project as well. Uh, I'm not very imaginative. You you'll have to. Um, you have to forgive me, and then uh, I'll just say Twitch chatbot app. Um, and this is important. So um, what I did here is that I went ahead. Uh, this was Terra's. I clicked fork. I forked it. Um, it uh, it ended up in my repository over here. And um, uh, so now I I have it's part of my repository. So I'm the owner. Um, this is the name of the repository itself. Uh, so let's go back over here. So owner is uh, dare to code, uh, which is my uh, my GitHub repository, um, um, and the repo is uh, you know Twitch.net and all that. But with the updated one that I actually have over here, um, if you look at uh, this is the chatbot test one uh, that I've been testing with. So we're going to use this guy here. Um, oops. I'm looking at myself infinitely. Um, so, so this is where 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 you would normally normally put the actual you know um, Twitch.net 
uh, that's uh, the repo name, and then the, um, the GitHub OAuth token, um, and that's the token. So let me show you how to get that token. And like I said, I will delete it shortly. So if you go to your profile, um, so you go in GitHub, you go to settings, um, and um, in settings, you go to developer settings, and you go uh, create a personal um, um, access token, you can actually generate a new token uh, and you can call it uh, Twitch um, test token uh, in this case. And the things that we need is the uh, repo and admin, uh, sorry, an admin uh, repo hook um, permissions um, specifically for this to, to work. So remember that. And um, uh, once we're happy, we're going to go ahead and generate a token. And here's my token. I'm going to go, go go ahead and copy it. I'm going to go back to um, um, here and specify it as part of the uh, GitHub or token. You might really want to have this obfuscated. You do not want to do what I'm doing right now and show it to the whole world, God forbid. Um, and uh, you want to make sure that it's well hidden. So this is the instance type. You can see that it's already, and, and because I said that um, the type of the field that I want is the key pair, uh, uh, CloudFormation was smart enough uh, from a console to go ahead and look up all of my key pairs and, and provide them as a uh, selection. Um, here we can choose um, Ubuntu or Windows. So you can see we, we kind of built it for Windows and I'm going to use the public default uh, 3100 and um, I'm kind of doing it backwards here. Um, but I chose the VPC and the subnet into which I'm going to be um, uh, deploying um, all of this as it goes through the CDCI pipeline. So here we are. Um, you may, there are a couple of things. You can tag your resources. You can um, execute on the different permissions and all that. We're not going to do any of that. Uh, we're going to jump through and we're going to go to acknowledge that. So because we are creating some of the resources and IMs uh, we, um, that we did not specify specifically names, we are saying that it's okay um, for, um, uh, for CloudFormation to specify the names of the resources. And what they do really is that they use kind of the, uh, the stack name or the project name and they append uh, like a unique identifier in the end. Uh, it makes it a lot easier because uh, it prevents uh, you know, you mistakenly uh, prov provisioning resources that are probably of the same name and in that way um, are creating a conflict uh, when it creates. So we're going to start creating this um, and, uh, and it should be actually fairly fast considering how much time I've burnt. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so here you can actually track as everything is getting created. So all the things that I showed you, um, you can see them uh, creating progress. You can see uh, uh, you know, specifics around this. Um, should something go wrong, it should tell you, it should actually give you, um, you, you should all, um, also have a link to, um, you know, what, what actually happened and how it happened. Um, it's very, very good around actually giving you uh, proper errors um, for the most part. Um, and, um, you know, I've been, I've been fairly um, um, happy with, you know, um, not just now kind of in my uh, kind of role of a solution architect, but in the past, uh, I was a, professional, a part of professional services um, for uh, AWS, and uh, which means that I was doing this personally for our customers um, and others. I was implementing these things. I was creating all these things um, and uh, uh, creating all these projects and stuff on behalf of our partners, helping our partners, helping our customers do that um, and all that. So kind of um, the struggle can be real when things go wrong. Uh, so we're going to just give it a bit. Um, so let me see. If uh, oh, what are people talking about? Oh, awesome. Okay, CF template scripts, app spec, and build spec on repo. Oh, good stuff. Oh, you guys are having a chat of your life here. Wish I was part of that. Uh, AWS forums make sense. Any questions? Ah, oh, it seems it seems like everybody gets it. Look at this. Awesome. Loving this. Let's see how far we are. You guys don't mind if we're pushing the time limits here, right? You guys are all good. Everybody's quiet. That means we're good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good times, good times. So come on. Come you. Deploy yourself right now. So here we are waiting 
and like I said, you can see live what's happening. So it's not, it's not, uh, you know, it's not obfuscated. You can see now we're at the point where we're deploying the instance and stuff. That means we are actually nearing the end. Um, if you remember our structure from, um, you know, uh, from the script that I was showing. Um, we do have code build policy, buckets, security groups created, roles created, uh, code deploy created, um, almost there, almost there. Here we are, here's our instance created. What else is missing? Oh, the overarching code pipeline, the application policies. Okay. Policies are done. So we had a role and a policy attached. And last but not least, the pipeline. One pipeline to rule them all. Here it is, done. Pipeline is done. Um, it's it's pretty fast, as you can see. So it's a fairly complex you know, infrastructure that got deployed. You can deploy this many times over. Um, and um, so if you go now to the pipeline and we go to what we created, so this is Twitch chatbot. That's the one that we just created now. Uh, we can look at the history um, of the pipeline itself. So if you go, you can see it's live doing it right now. So it's actually pulling stuff directly out of the GitHub. Um, and then it's gonna, once it's done with that and it's gonna live update this, um, it's gonna move over to uh, 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 code build and then it's gonna move over to code deploy. So first it's gonna pull and create a package out of GitHub. As you can see, it did that. Now it's going to move to code build, where it's going to perform those uh, um, build actions um, as, that we specified in build spec file um, itself. It's going to do it on that uh, specifically on that um, uh, container that we specified. Mind you, you can use your own container, right? Uh, you don't have to use ours. Um, ours are just you know we pre-created .NET Core 2.0 and 1.0, so you're welcome to use them, um, but you don't need to. Um, and um, so, you know, and these things, uh, why would you do that? Um, I guess if you have like dependencies and third parties that, that are required for the build and you want to like speed up build to be super much faster than it is, um, I guess you can just toss in, you know, um, create an image that already um, has all the dependencies that your build may require um, so that it can speed up the build process. Um, Usually don't come across people complaining about the length of the build process, but um, I do have, I did work with uh, some pretty hardcore uh, customers uh, where the build process is very important um, in a sense that uh, from, a, from a speed perspective, because um, um, they are updating things like firmware on your phones and uh, you know on the chipsets and all the things that are using, and those things are massive uh, and, uh, and they're very, critical I mean, it comes to the time of deployment and all this sort of stuff. So speed does matter to them um, um, quite a bit. So uh, these tricks you may want to use um, if, if you do come across something like that. Okay. Um, Thank you so much. This is Ryan. Um, I'm going to have to stop you there Sure. Yeah, we, we're almost there. Look at this. Well, the build was successful and we're moving on to the deploy. So we should have a deploy action um, very quick that is coming through. Um, I want to kind of go to the cloud formation over here. Um, I click on it and uh, it's actually there's there's an easier way to check it out um, while it's happening um, you can either get it from the actual uh, cloud formation um, under outputs um, and you can see that we have actually outputted the, the actual URL uh, but if you're wondering where that URL is coming from and how did I uh, kind of build it out of. Uh, I built it out of when I created through CloudFormation, uh, when I created that instance. Um, you can see that this is the instance that I created, and if you click on it, you'll see that this is the public DNS for it, and you can use that 
um, you know, as part of your, you know, building your HTTP uh, link to the application that you're using. Um, so I reckon this is almost done. Let's just see. Um, I think it might be doing, oh, it's not responding. So I guess it's still deploying. Um, give it a minute and that's it. Come on. Come on, you can do it. I know you can. I know you can. Remember, it's running all those all those strips that we've uh, um, specified. It's uh, it's actually uh, installing and uh, you know and and activate you know and 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 putting together everything, including the web server um, and and everything that you need. So um, it does. Um, I did anticipate a couple more seconds to it, um, but even with all that, it's actually I think very fast. Um, and uh, and those are those are things you know to make sure that uh, you're on the sure side when you're actually deploying things. Obviously, there are um, there is always room for optimizing those things, and I'm going to leave that to you guys. Um, there we go. Is it done? Here it is. It's deployed. Um, so I'm using a I'm using the old logo, but basically it's uh, yeah. Hello. You should be able to. Hi, roses. What are roses? Flowers or the flowers? Yeah, yeah, why not? And uh, it should work. Uh, I say roses, and uh, off it goes. So this is an actual thing. See, fully deployed, fully done. We kind of rushed, rushed it to make sure, and we did. But to the very end, uh, sorry that I took a couple more minutes. Uh, uh, full end-to-end -end, um, uh, creating uh, um, uh, and deploying um, the entire infrastructure for CDCI, as well as execution of that infrastructure and seeing the code uh, in the end actually running on the instance that we provide provision as part of that infrastructure itself. Okay.